What if I told you that we have the antidote to the greatest epidemic of our time, suicide in young adults? The rate of death by suicide now rivals the rate of death by auto accident in young adults. And basic science, clear as a bell, shows us that we are four fifths less likely to take our lives when we have a strong spiritual life that is shared. There's nothing in the clinical or social sciences as profoundly protective against suicide. Together with my colleagues at Columbia Medical School, when we looked at structural MRI, when we looked at the architecture of the brain through MRIs, what we see is in people with a sustained spiritual life, broad and pervasive regions of cortical thickness represented in red. These are regions of perception, reflection, and orientation. With 80% overlap, these regions are not thick, but thin in people with recurrent major depression. Normally in an MRI study, you see an article published with it, there's a little tiny speck of difference. These are huge regions of the brain to show effectively greater processing power, a thicker cortex. The cortical thickness across the regions of the spiritual brain decreased the level of symptomology of depression one year out, a year from now. That is very strong evidence that indeed, spiritual life is neuroprotective against depression. The Army gets the same slice of American pie as does higher ed or entry level jobs, 18 through 25 year olds. It's one story. It's our American story and it's the epidemic of suicide. And so the Army decided to take a data driven approach and support the spiritual core of every soldier. And in one year, we are already seeing a 28% decreased rate of suicide. Can higher ed do that? Yeah. Of course higher education can do that. Can all of our institutions to receive young adults transform to support the spiritual core? Can we move from narrowly transactional relationships with young adults to ones that are loving, that are far more generative, that are transformational? People's personal spiritual life can be formed many ways. Some people say it is through prayer, meditation. Others say in nature. Nature is my cathedral, that's where I realize. And in fact, we have a great deal of science that says nature actually entrains the brain. Walking through nature does very much what prayer might do. It awakens our natural spiritual awareness. People realize their spiritual nature through many paths, one of which is religion. For about two thirds of people, they say I am spiritual and I am religious. And then for about a third of people, they say, I am a profoundly spiritual person, but I am not religious. Both are good and both tap the same neural correlates. There's much strom and dross. I am Catholic, I am Jewish, I am Muslim. Well, actually, we're all using the same spiritual neural correlates. So I often hear people say, am I a spiritual person or how do you define spirituality? And you know, everyone is welcome to define it and know it and feel it exactly as they want. And it is also the case that just as we are born with two eyes, two ears and a nose, we are born spiritual beings with a natural seat, a neuro seat of transcendent awareness. We are born, every one of us, with an innate capacity for spiritual awareness. There's one spiritual brain, and we all have it. When we realize our nature, when we build, if you will, and strengthen the spiritual core of who we really are, then our lives unfold in an entirely different way. Life is healthier. Life is far more full of resilience. Life looks different. It's far more of an adventure, an expedition. And when we boil down and look right at the data, where in the hundreds of peer review articles say beyond a shadow of a doubt, there's nothing as profoundly protective against the diseases of despair, the epidemic of our time, as a strong spiritual core. Over the past 25 years as a scientist and as a clinical psychologist, it's become crystal clear to me that suffering is an invitation for a deepening of spiritual life. But we have to say yes to it. 
Spirituality is not a life hack. Spirituality is a deep reorientation in our lives through which we see into the truer, more foundational nature of reality. There are always two realities, and they both matter. We are a point and we are a wave. We are magnificently distinct with GPS coordinates all over the globe and exquisitely diverse zipped up bio body suits. And at the very same time, we are part of one human heart, one field of life, one oneness, a unit of reality, one field of consciousness, loving sacred consciousness. And we are built to be able to toggle between these two realities. Every one of us is built to be able to perceive that we are exquisitely unique and we are part of one great sea of life. We are way oversold on the idea that we can control life. And we are really almost indoctrinated into an illusion that achieving awareness alone can be enough to handle the challenges of life we must be able to look at life in a bigger way, in a deeper way. And that is our awakened awareness. Awakened awareness is when we shift and we say, what is life showing me now? What is being revealed here? It's a stance of deep curiosity, total observation. Observation of the eyes, yes, but also of the heart. But whatever our language, we are no longer controlling life. We are in a dynamic conversation with life. I think that in K-12, you know, I was taught to have the wrong conversation. I was taught to go after what I want and get it and give it every bit of strength I could so that I could win the day. And that's a helpful skill, but it's completely insufficient to live a meaningful, full life. So we need to teach children, and really maybe as adults, we need to help revisit this and teach ourselves to have a different conversation with life, to go from saying, what do I want and how am I gonna get it, to the deeper, more fundamental question of what is life showing me now and what is life showing us now? So we need both achieving awareness and awakened awareness. And when the two go hand in hand, our life becomes a magnificent adventure. It becomes a quest. We're constantly part of the symphony, helping each other realize the grander opus. In this gift of life, we are loved, we are held, we are guided, and we are never alone. And not only that, we are given the ultimate opportunity to show up for one another so that we might be loving and holding and guiding and never leave anyone alone. That's the spiritual path.